someone, a man, two-time speaker of the River State House of Assembly, two-time chairman of the Conference of Speakers of Nigeria, two-time governor of River State, two-time chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, State and Chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, Your Excellency, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps, my sister and colleague in the office, the Honorable Minister of State for Transportation, distinguished members of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, both past and present, your Excellencies, the former governors who are here present, the honorable members of House of Reps, both present and past, members of the National Working Committee, the former chairman of our great party and former governor of Edo State, All right, all right, former speakers of the different houses of assembly, my colleagues when I was a speaker, my colleagues when I was a governor, my colleagues as minister, my wife insists that I must call Governor Bindo by name, so Governor Bindo, so I can have peace. You know, if you don't obey your wife, you will not have peace. My dear lovely wife, and the women. who also insists that I must recognize women differently from men, I thought I would recognize my wife and my kids, fellow Nigerians.
please. My speech today is titled Forward with Nigerians. Sorry, Forward with Courage. Forward with Courage. Fellow Nigerians, I stand before you today to declare my intention. You are the Lord that is your name. submit my application to serve as your next president. I did not come to this decision lightly. I have served our nation for the last seven years as Minister of Transportation. For eight years before that, I served as Governor of River State. In the preceding eight years before that, I was Speaker of the River State House of Assembly. Within this period, I have also served as the Director General of President Buhari campaign organization twice. These 23 years of service have equipped me not only with great experience in governance and public service, but also compassion for the ordinary citizens of our dear country. After more than two decades in the public arena, I had wanted to go on holiday and spend more time with my family before charting a new course outside politics. But at 56, but I'm 56 years old, and a member of the generation born after independence who has seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of Nigeria, I'm compelled by the urgency of our present challenges to place my experience and proving capacity at the service of the nation at the highest level. Those who know me can testify that I have always been a straight talker. This straight 
has not always made me popular. But I speak with truth. I speak the truth with conviction. So allow me to speak the truth here today. We are facing some very serious challenges as a country. These are problems of insecurity, challenges of greater accountability in governance, youth unemployment, and the scourge of spiral poverty. These problems are, however, not the exclusive preserve of Nigeria. We live in a troubled world. The reality we used to know has altered in nearly every nation. Climate change has brought about food scarcity in some places. Population explosion has produced unusual pressure on resources and supplies. Poverty has become a challenge all over the world, especially in the developing world. The COVID crisis has placed unanticipated burdens on the budget of nations and put pressure on available resources. Transborder crises have erupted in unusual places and placed the internal security of many nations under pressure. We are part of the Sahel, an area of the world that is subject to frequent terrorist attacks. Let us look at our current challenges as parts and consequences of these global trends. I admit that Nigeria's problem did not begin today, and they will not be solved overnight. But they are not beyond the capacity of our people to solve. Fortunately, that process has already started. There is an ancient proverb that a society, and I quote, a society that grows great when old men plant trees under whose shade they know they will never sit. The current administration under the able leadership of President Muhammad Buhari has planted many such trees in Nigeria's future. We have invested billions in infrastructure, human capital development, and made reforms that will pay off over time in terms of socioeconomic growth and stability. We have invested heavily in projects and initiatives that will secure a brighter, better future for Nigeria. I am proud to have been part of this success story. It has been an honor, honor overseeing the Ministry of Transportation in reviving the Moribund Railways and working tirelessly to create an integrated national transportation system that will positively impact our economic, trade, employment, business, and national cohesion. Have we achieved everything we set out to do? Of course not. Could we have done more? Undoubtedly, there's always room for improvement. On reflection, the notion of running for president would have been far beyond the imagination of the young lad running around the streets of Dub or our small compound in Ubima. Not to talk of the young, indigent student leader mobilizing peers at the University of Port Harcourt. But my aspiration is not about fulfilling any personal ambition. I am contesting for the office because I believe that it is my moral duty to give what I can in the service of my country. problems. Our democracy must ensure the emergence of a leadership that is equipped with broad experience in governance to ensure stability and continuity. To sustain our democracy and preserve our unity, we need a steady hand and a passion for success in a nation that remains united. 
to pursue prosperity for all Nigerians. It is the combination of experience and patriotic passion that I bring to the table. I have been in the political arena for 23 years. I have served at every level of government, local, state, and federal. I have served both as a political appointee and an elected official. I have served both as an executive, as governor of River State, and as a legislator, as Speaker of the State House of Assembly. In these capacities, I did not just, I did not just fill vacant posts. As a speaker, I managed the legislative process in a difficult transition from military rule. As governor, I, defi I defeated mercantile militancy and restored security. As a minister, we give you As a minister, I can modestly claim to have justified the trust of Nigerians. For us in the South South, Port Harcourt Medjugorje has started. I will be there tomorrow. Yes. I do not come from a privileged background. I grew up poor. I understand how it feels to go without some meals in a day. I know the pain of lack and the agony of want. I know what it means to see your parents toil just to keep a roof over your family's head. I know what it is to feel the weight of expectation when you are the only one in your family who enjoys the opportunity to attend university. Subsequently, I funded the education of my siblings to, the, to become university graduates like me. I know what it is to scrimp and save and struggle. In spite of all odds, I have journeyed to this point. I could not have come this far without my parents, Fidelis and Mary who sacrificed so much for me. I could not have come this far without the support of my siblings. I could not have come this far without the mentors, friends and sponsors who have believed in me. I could not have come this far without the precious wife of my youth and my, and my best friend, Judy. <laughs> I could not have come this far. I could not have come this far without my children, who mean everything to me. Above, I could not have come this far without the support of Dr. and Mrs. Peter Dilly. I could not have come this far. I could not have come this far without the support of Chief Rufus Ada George and his wife. Neither could I have come this far without the support of the President, Muhammad Buhari, and his wife. <laughs> Above all, I could not have come this far without the grace of God.
the next leg of my political journey will be tough. But, but I'm excited to go out and engage with Nigerians from every walk of life. I'm ready to go from Meduguri to Makodi, from Sokoto to Sabama, from Yola to Oyo, from Baragiri, Baragiri to Brini Kebi, to each town and village. I will have one message. Hope is around the corner. Chikaro wakanoma, batumo tu, kubote buroma, oziru no, awa uero sarima, tiri dile tokito, oziru. I look forward to meeting you in your towns, in your villages, cities, campuses, and creeks. I want to hear your desires, I want to hear your needs and pains, I want to know what matters most to you, I want to listen and learn, I will be coming with one assurance, I will be welcome everywhere because the blood of every Nigerian, Nigerian flow in my veins, I will shall be the president of all and every Nigerian. I believe that despite our cultural differences, we remain one people under one God. We may speak different languages or worship in different ways, but we all want the same things. A better life for our children, the ability to support our families, the freedom to live in peace without fear for our lives or property. I have never been the type who folds his arms and complains about inadequacies I see around me. I have always jumped in with both feet to do whatever I can to help, to try and bring relief to those suffering, to work to make things right where I see wrong. If you elect me as your president, I promise to play my part to the best of my ability. <laughs> Every day, I will rise and go to work for you. I will never forget the fact that I'm there to serve you. I will be your servant. Today, I stand as an aspirant to the position of the office of the president. Because of that same passion for people, that same drive for results, more than ever before, I am burning with the skill to make a decisive difference in the lives of all Nigerians. No matter the darts and arrows that come my way, I will remain steadfast because the stakes are too high. We cannot afford to fail. We cannot afford to bear off course. I pledge my heart, mind, and soul to the task of building a Nigeria in which every child can go to school. Every young person can find work or support to start a business. Every citizen can travel safely around the country and sleep at night, knowing that law and order prevails and every Nigeria feels included, heard, and respected. The, the world is law and order. The road ahead will be long and others, but we go forward with faith. Forward with courage, forward with compassion, forward with hope, forward with pride for who we are as a people and who we are yet to become. The future is bright because of you. God bless you. God bless the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for giving me this chance. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Shibike Rotimi Amechi. <laughs> Earlier on, we had a 
observe one minute silence for those of our brothers and sisters who died at the railway in Kaduna. May their souls rest in peace. Hallelujah. 